This is a demo of the mass material movement um, customization that we developed for Epicor. Uh, this screen, what it essentially does is facilitate the um, movement of materials um, in a larger scale than what you typically run into in no normal Epicor. Um, in, in traditional Epicor, what you do is you'd go in and you would do a um, transfer materials um, for each every single individual part that you need to uh, move from one location to another using this inventory transfer screen um, where you go in and, and basically tell it to part, give it a from and to and hit transfer and just continue that for as many parts you have. If you needed to move dozens or hundreds of parts, uh, this would be a very tedious process to go through and do that. So that's why we developed this custom screen here. And it's a pretty simple uh, screen, uh, but it actually operates in a couple different ways just to try to give everybody the flexibility they might need to use it. Um, currently, it operates in that you can transfer materials, uh, what we call manually. That's to say that if I tell it my source and destination location, I can come in here and tell it all the parts and quantities in this grid by hand that I want to move. Um, I can also load in this list of parts based off of BOM. Or lastly, I can just move all the parts from one location to another just with, uh, you know, clicking one button, essentially. Let's start off with the manual selection. This is the uh, simplest of each. Um, you'd start off by selecting your source location up here. So I come up and I'm going to select, uh, I'm going to use my main warehouse. And for my bin, I'm going to select this first bin here. And then for destination, I can say where I'm sending it to. So here I'm going to select an inspection area, and for the bin I'm going to select this. So after you do that, the rest of the screen activates, so you can start to use it more. Um, first off, we have additional fields here. Uh, we have transfer date, so just like in the standard um, Epicor screen, you can tell it what date you use. We have the ability to change that here as well, and also apply a tram reference if you wish to. And the real heart of it is down here in this grid where you're specifying your movement requests. And you can either just type this data in, or if it's apart from the list here, you can actually select it from the drop down. So if I want to go through here, um, I could select, um, I could either just start typing them. So I'll go down here, 3050. When I hit tab out of that, we will see it does, it auto fills in the quantity. Now this is the full quantity for this part that's in this warehouse and bin. But you can see that the whole field highlighted here, so if I only want to move part of that, I can come in there and change that. And you can either tab or uh, just move your cursor down to the next one, and just continue to type as many others as you want. So I'm going to just enter a few others here. And um, I didn't mention it already, the drop-down list that you're seeing here is automatically filtered, so it's only showing you parts that are in this warehouse and bin. So if you've got inventory scattered across other, various other places, you're not going to see parts that aren't already in this. And we're validating against that list, so a little extra step to make sure that um, we're keeping things uh, uh, good there. Um, you, you, since you do have the ability to change the quantities, that does open up the opportunity here that you can actually um, give it a quantity higher than what you have on hand. And depending on your policy for um, inventory going negative, it may have different effects. So let's say this part here, I had 10,000 available. Let's say I came in and made this 10,002. If I come over and hit this transfer button, what it's going to do is it's going to transfer all the inventory, but this last part when it got to it, it's going to tell me, all right, part 38x200 has failed the negative inventory test. And it's essentially telling me that it, it, it's okay, there's a soft error, but the transaction is going to result in a negative on-hand quantity for the bin. You wish to continue. So I'm going to actually end up with negative 2 in this bin and then 10,002 in the inspection area. Again, that's really depending on whether your uh, Epicor configuration allows for this or not. I'm going to go ahead and hit yes. And when it's all said and done, I'll say the transfer process is complete. Entries that have uh, been successfully processed have been removed from the grid. So the idea here is if anything failed and it was a hard failure, those rows are still going to stay in here. So you actually know that you can deal with them. There might be a variety of reasons why one part can't move from, from one bin to another. 
um, you know, for a lot of business rules reasons. Um, so, you know, we are definitely uh, abiding to those same rules, and but we keep them in here so you can keep track of which ones worked and which ones didn't. Uh, one of the reasons that you may typically have a failure, but we actually work around, is if the part in the uh, in the part master record isn't set up for this warehouse, then that would typically be an F core that it wouldn't allow that. Uh, but we will dynamically create the warehouse and bin records for the uh, part as a part of this process here. So you don't have to worry about that particular um, circumstance. Now, if I switch back to uh, inspection area as my source, and I'm just going to flip flop and switch this back to uh, main as the destination, um, we can actually go over what the next option is here. And the next option is uh, this, this load parts area. So earlier we just typed the parts we wanted in here, but maybe you want to set it up where it's doing the hard work for you, filling in the list of parts. And uh, there's two options currently. There's one which goes by BOM, which uh, looks at the method of manufacturing for another part to figure out which materials go into making that part so you can pre-populate this list. Or the other one is all in source location. Let me start with the all in source location uh, since we have some data to look at here. All you do is you check that box and hit load and it brings in everything we brought, we previously transferred. This uh, bin was empty earlier, so um, it's a pretty clean transfer here. You can see that last part that I did, that it's got a quantity of 10,002 available here. And if I flip-flop this, you'd actually see a negative two sitting in this uh, one, one, one. Now you can still manipulate this, even though you use this to load the data in in the first place. You do still have the chance to manipulate this grid. You could certainly change the quantities if you want to, or if you wanted to set it up where you um, you just wanted to completely not consider one of these parts, you can come right in and just delete rows in here just by using your keyboard and hitting the delete key and just uh, clearing out that, that grid there. So it's pretty flexible as far as all that goes. And then when you when you have the grid how you want it, you hit transfer and I would just move it from where it's at now, back to uh, to where it's destined to. The last option we have here is by BOM. And what I'm going to do for that one, I'm actually going to clear this out. I'm going to switch back to uh, main 111 as my source. And I'm going to select inspection as my destination. Now for BOM, I've got a method tracker sitting down here just to show you what I'm going to actually be doing. Um, for part 4600-1, I've got four material requirements here. In this first one, I need four. This one, I need four. This one, I need three. And this one, I need eight. And in this bin, I've got all, I've got three of those parts. I don't have all of them, and I don't have all of the quantities I need. So I'm going to show you how they, how we handle that when a situation like that occurs. So you start off by selecting by BOM here and picking which part BOM you're looking at. So I was looking at 4600-1, and I'm going to hit load here. What it's going to tell me is I'm going to get a series of pop-ups here that's addressing each of the different issues that it ran into. Uh, the first one is um, this part uh, 971 doesn't have sufficient quantity in that warehouse and bin. The part's there, but I just don't have as many as the method thinks that I should have. So it's asking me, do you just want to add what's available and continue? So I'm going to go ahead and hit yes there. And I've got a second one here with this part 900. It's not available at all in that warehouse and bin. Is it okay to skip that part and continue? Now at this point, if I said no to either of these questions, the entire transaction is canceled out. We haven't moved anything. But if I say yes, what it does, and by the time it's all said and done, is I'm going to get a listing of what it did find that was available to make this BOM. So if you kind of think about this, that maybe you have all your inventory in one location, and as you're getting ready to produce it, you want to stage it somewhere, this would be a great uh, situation for that, where you basically say, all right, my BOM's all set up, load all the inventory in, and transfer it to the staging location so I can get out to the production floor. And it only grabs the quantities that it thinks it needs for that uh, particular BOM, um, or as much as it has available. And just like anything else, anytime we're all ready to transfer. You just hit the transfer button here, and it'll tell you the process is complete, and uh, now it's sitting in that new location. So that's the mass material movement. Again, it's a fairly simple screen, but if this is something that you 
regularly transfer a fair amount of parts um, at, at, at once, uh, it might save you a fair amount of time. So thanks for uh, watching.